What's happening, everybody? Back by popular demand, me! Me in the hosting chair as we go through the waiver wire, break down the news. That, quote, Monday night football game that's left a lot of us in tears. Speaking about yours, truly, don't miss a second of today's show. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, that is. I am your host, back by popular demand. Mm. The people were like... Where's cool Andy? <laughs> By popular demand, I mean Andy's white blood cells and antibodies. Right. They, They're very popular. They love me. They want me hosting all the time. You heard him yesterday. He, sh- he powered through, and then he needs more power. He's out. Hey, look, I can completely- Need more power. I can completely understand. I was, I was uh, a dead man walking for the first month of the season, especially that first week. I don't know if he caught what I have caught, but it's going around his family, so our thoughts and prayers are with Mr. Holloway and all of the Holloways. Excellent work, Jason. Thank you. Thank <laughs> but, you. Welcome to the show. I am Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? Joined by, guess what, Jay? Hmm. You're my best friend of the day, buddy. Oh, yes. You did I it. I love this. <laughs> that just makes me so happy. Take that, Jay Grizz. <laughs> Jay Grizz, cardboard bear extraordinaire. He's holding it down over there. Tuesday's show, it's waiver day. Our streaming quarterbacks, our defense versus offense pick, news and notes, all kinds of fantasy goodness happening today. This is a, sm- a jam-packed show. And yes. for the first time in the last three weeks, there are quality waiver pickups. It certainly seems that way. I feel like the last couple weeks have just been like, oh my goodness, Here, here's who you pick up. Close your eyes, click a guy at random, good luck. But yeah. now, now I'm sure. excited to talk about today. Make sure you follow us on the social medias, Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers. On the IG, I am at FF Hitman. Jason's at Jason FFL, and Andy is at Andy Holloway. Monday Night Football, Jason. <laughs> at least that's I was told that's what I was watching. That yeah was Oof. this is the pinnacle of the NFL. The bright lights are on. Are you ready for some football? It's Monday night. One team was ready for some football. The New England Patriots trounced the Jets 33 to 0. Honestly, the Patriots could have scored however many points they wanted to score last night. I don't two zero. I don't know how they only scored thirty three points. Like uh, kudos, genuinely. I'm not even joking. The Jets' defense played pretty darn well. I mean, what are you going to do when your quarterback is seeing ghosts and giving up <laughs> yes. five, ter- five? What do you have like five? Uh, turnovers was it four interceptions and a fumble might have been six four intercept- for all yes. I know four interceptions a fumble and then the botched snap it was a delight if you had the Patriots defense as yes. it's been all season long it is yes congratulations on your many victories Adam Schefter tweeted out the Patriots have now outscored their opponents by 175 points this season the second biggest differential through seven games in NFL history. Not just in a, like literally, you have to go back to the first season of in nineteen twenty when they didn't even know how to play football. Right, and one team was like had the big guy, and so they they won by a ton. Look, the Patriots defense, Mike. I know you. Yes, you had a victory in the league of record that was snatched away well not it, it was it was that was the worst beat I've ever had in fantasy football and I have lost in the playoffs by a, a stat correction I have lost championship matches but I've never felt angry like I, I've it, because I had carry on Johnson I had Will Fuller I had two guys go down in the first quarter somehow I was able to get things together I had Darren Waller 
I had the Jaguars. Like I had made some good moves. Still looked and like you were going to win. And the I only was, yes, the only way that you weren't going to win is if the Patriots went out there and had like a twenty-three point night, and they had literally <laughs> barely enough. Yes, less than a point. And, and and then last night ESPN was uh, fidgeting with their system and their scoring, and some points were taken away, and you won. Yep. And then it was taken back away. Yeah. From so you. I got to double tilt, which was nice. I don't know if you've ever been real angry, experienced defeat, and then someone comes to you and was like, "Well, hold on, hold on, you may." No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, punch, punch in the gut. So uh, that really sucked. And uh, let's go fantasy takeaways. Well, before we finish the fantasy takeaway on the Patriots, on the on the defense, would you say that the Bills are a very good defense? Yes. They are a top 12 fantasy defense right now on the season. They've been very good. Did you know that if you took the Bills and what they've done through the course of the season and you doubled it uh -huh. and then you added the Bills again to make it a triple on fantasy points, that is what the Patriots have scored. Yes. They have tripled a top 12 very good defense in the Bills, it is not fair. Okay, moving past. <laughs> it truly has broken the system, and the NFL is to blame with this ridiculous schedule that they have given them. On the New York side of the ball, Sam Darnold was horrific, and I want to hear your takeaway on this, Jason, because while Sam Darnold was terrible, I put the majority of the blame on Adam Gase because he did absolutely nothing to help Sam Darnold out, he kept he kept on calling deep plays when Darnold needed someone that he could fire. When the blitz was coming, Darnold needed a hot read. But every time you would look and say, "Oh, is there a slant that I can fire up?" No, he's just running running nines and posts down the field. And Adam Gase was not protecting Darnold at all. Well, I mean, I I, I mean, there's no secret here. I, I don't think either of us have ever thought Adam Gase is a good coach. We call Correct. him the b-hole for a reason, and it's because he's a b-hole, and he's not a good coach. That being said, the fantasy outlook for Sam Darnold, I know how horrifically bad it was, but I would still be willing to stream him as soon as this coming week and on because their schedule is unbelievably easy for the, uh, you know, for the foreseeable future. I guess this week I think is Jacksonville. Now, they're not as great as they were. You know, they're not the, the Saxonville team with Jalen Ramsey and all of that. But after that especially, it opens up, and it becomes like the Patriots' schedule has been so far this season. Yeah, I did want to bring up that despite how bad Sam Darnold was and how he has hurt people. I mean, he hurt me through way of the, the Patriots' defense. I saw many box scores where he hurt people. He did. He pulled the Baker Mayfield snatching defeat from the hands of victory. Mm. But you know what? If Sam Darnold were playing the Atlanta Falcons this week, I would still play Sam Darnold. The Falcons are finally punting. <laughs> I mean, that's what it looks like. They <laughs> traded Mo Sanu for a two. Matt Ryan has a high ankle sprain. We'll my, talk about my this point of that is just that as as bad as fantasy football can make you feel, you got to move on. Each week is its own self-contained thing. You you can't just focus on how terrible someone was last week. Le'Veon Bell remains a workhorse. He actually looked pretty good, 15 for 70 with a long of 19. Uh, only, only one reception, which is yeah that what well, that, that that speaks that's to my point. That's exactly what you're talking about. It's like where are the Lev Bell dump offs to overcome the blitz? Yes, it was it was outrageous what was happening. The pass catchers for New York did nothing. However, Robbie Anderson, Jameson Crowder, I'm trying to get them on my team for this stretch run that the Jets are about to put up. Would you sell Sony Michelle off the back of a three touchdown game? He had 19 carries for only 42 yards. But this Granted, is who he is. Right. Um, would you want to keep what he is, or would you look to move him off the back of a big game? I would. <sighs> If I need to sell him, I will. I'd prefer to hold on to him. The Patriots' schedule gets a little bit tougher coming up here. It becomes a very easy schedule, which is much more difficult than what they've been experiencing. <laughs> sure. and uh, But but during the playoffs, they have a couple particular matchups where Sony Michelle could be a 
I, uh, just I, a, a playoff week winner. I bring the name up because he is a sell high to me. Okay, he's a guy that he's disappointed as far as you know the the film. He doesn't look that great this whole season. He hasn't been busting anything off. Hasn't been breaking tackles. Yes, he falls into the goal line, and that's great. So he he's not a must sell. But Rex Burkhead will be back at some point. So those those playoff games you mentioned. Is it going to be Sony That's on the fair. goal line every time? I, I don't know. Brandon Bolden, again, was the first back. Uh, the first drive it was like they were on the three-yard line or so, and they tried to get him in first. So, you know, I, I think you can capitalize, get something good for him, maybe do a package trade for a better running back. Well, before we talk about the Patriots' wide receivers, we should just get into the news because there was news this morning. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. ESPN's Adam Schefter reported early this morning the Falcons are sending wide receiver Mohamed Sanu to the New England Patriots in exchange for a second round pick. All right, now we're back to a bit of a mess for the Patriots wide receivers. Julian Edelman, very safe. But Philip Dorsett, who had the nice touchdown, came through with a, a decent fantasy game. Congratulations, congratulations, Jason. But he was looking, he was trending up. Jacoby Myers had been trending up. Josh Gordon is still there, but bang Nikhil, up. Nikhil Harry is coming back. He's supposed to be back in a couple weeks. Uh, how do you evaluate this situation? I mean, what What's your biggest takeaway from them sending a second-round pick that's a, to that's get some new? That's a high price. I've, I've got several big takeaways um, the the first is that I don't know the status of Josh Gordon. I that's my the, biggest takeaway the, is that Gordon must be in a bad way. He if is trading. either very injured, or and I hate to say it, but oh, the team no, the, no, come but on. The, I'm just saying that crossed my mind that the team it's knows a fair thought what might be happening, no. and it might seem outlandish. Like why would you trade a second for? a wide receiver when you've got Josh Gordon, either he's very injured or he's dealing with some off the field, something or just personal issues. We've seen it every year of his career. So maybe that's a, a marker for that. That's one takeaway. Um, I'm not really interested in Muhammad Sanu right off the bat. He's going to prove, he's got to prove it to me first before I go and say, Oh, he's a good wide receiver on a great offense with great quarterback, because this system is not easy to learn. Plenty of good wide receivers have come here and failed, not been able to pick it up. Certainly not right away. Another thing it marks to me is on the flip side, right? The Falcons are selling a important piece of their offense for a future pick. Well, there was already rumors and whispers from the bushes that Sanu was at the end of his time with Atlanta. Either they were going to cut him or How trade him. Awesome is it for Mohamed Sanu? You literally oh, go from yes. you're like yes. Oh, it's like when I wake up and Andy says, "Hey, I'm sick." Oh, and then you're and like, I'm like, whoa, I get to move to the big chair. Yep. I'm uh, the dad. I'm the dad. Now, Calvin Ridley, I think, is a huge massive uh, beneficiary of this. However, you're going to have to wait two weeks because I don't personally, I don't think Matt Ryan plays this week. They've got the bye next week. So why force him back at this point? You're wanting the L's. You're playing Seattle this week. So I think it's going to be two weeks and I'm not trusting the backup. And obviously, you're not going to play him on a bye. But after that, if you can buy Calvin Ridley cheap right now, if you're not needing him now, I think the second half of the year he could be uh, a, a real great fantasy asset. Yep, Austin Hooper will also receive more targets. This, this is what is happening for Hooper. Uh, it was being reported Adrian Peterson has a grade one high ankle sprain and a grade two low ankle sprain. That sounds like a grade three <laughs> rough ankle sprain. Yeah, he's out. Um, right, and I believe this is a short week. I, I, I forget. I think they yeah do they don't play, they play on Ari Thursday. Yes, well, they play I, the Vikings Thursday. Yes, yeah. So there's no chance he's going to be there. Uh, Chris Thompson is we he was out last week. We're not sure of his status. He's it, probably out, which means it's Wendell Wendell Small. Small is just against the Vikings. It's just a guy. We'll talk about him in the waiver wire area. But I mean. Hmm. He's, yep. he's the clear-cut back for a team that wants to run the ball. Will Fuller is expected to miss, quote, several weeks. Matt Ryan, uh, he did go undergo the MRI on Monday. We, we're still waiting to hear some results for that. He's not ruled out. I believe it's 
uh, I, I saw an update that oh, did we is, have one? It is basically the same thing Pat Mahomes had, which is a high ankle sprain, but it's not this. It's it's a low grade high ankle sprain. Um, he, you know, you can play through it, but you got your bye week next right. week. Why? Yep, I agree with you. I think Matt Ryan's going to miss. Adam Thielen expected to miss week eight. We were just talking about the short week. He is targeting a week nine return. Drew Brees, he plans to resume practicing this week. Take one more week off, Drew. Because <laughs> he's the, playing Arizona. Yeah, the Cardinals fan. I mean, we're three wins in a row. You don't need us. You don't need to rush that thumb, Drew. Get healthy, my friend. Browns coach Freddie Kitchens. He has said Baker Mayfield is good to go. He had that hip scare uh, a couple weeks ago, but resting over the bye. And, and he clarified. He only means health wise. Oh. He said he said he's good to go, but like I'm only talking about health here. Come on. Not, not ability to play right now with that offensive line. Andy Reid, the Chiefs coach, has said Sammy Watkins is day to day with his hamstring. If he comes back he, let's say he's full practice, would you would you play him? Sammy? Yeah, with yes. Matt Moore. Yes, I would play him. Coming off the injury. I think I would I would give him an honorary benching. I well, I'm just speaking for my team, yeah. and I'm, my team's in a bad way. I would play Sammy Watkins. <laughs> I guess if you need him, you need him. Uh, Pete Carroll, when oh. talking about Rashad Penny's usage, who you may not have realized, Rashad Penny was active. Oh, I did realize. I did in one of my deep <laughs> dynasty leagues where we got a double flex, and um, you know it was between him and C.J. Procise. Well, he was active, so I threw him in of over Procise. So first-round pick. First round running back pick, Rashad Penny, he's active. Of course he's going to play. But his usage, it just worked out that way. That was the quote, quote from Pete It Carroll. just worked out that way. What was it two snaps? Yeah. No touches. First round pick. Uh, look, these coaches, man, uh, Matt Nagy, he's, he's not in here. Matt Nagy comes oh, out and says, yeah. of course I know we need to run the ball more. I'm not an idiot. That was his quote. I know I'm not an idiot. You're saying that like only an idiot would run the ball seven times as a team. You just did that. You ju you can't say like, I you know I know I need to stop making dad jokes on the show right after making a dad joke. Not yes. an idiot. Some of these guys, man. Kyle Allen will start for the Panthers Sunday against the 49ers. It's being reported Cam Newton is not 100 percent, and that's what they are waiting for. Falcons running back Ito Smith will miss this week with a concussion. Makes Devonta Freeman more interesting. Well, I don't think it makes Devonta Freeman any more interesting. I think Brian Hill will come in in the Ito Smith role, personally. But should Devonta Freeman get suspended, that makes a player much more interesting. You know, for throwing the punch, I, I doubt he gets uh, yeah. suspended. It, that's pretty rare. Yeah, if if you're getting if you get ejected with with actual time left in the game, they consider that your suspension. Right. If, if it was Vonta's perfect, he would get a suspension. Yeah. Well, but yes. Freeman's such a good character guy through his career. Yep. Probably won't. But if he did, Brian Hill would be very interesting. Tyrell Williams is questionable against the Texans, and Carrion Johnson is expected <clears throat> to miss some time with a knee injury. Uh, there For now, they're calling him week-to-week. Week. That was the news and notes. That was not a very fun news and notes. The problem is when you finish a week of NFL football, a lot of times people get hurt. That's true. I don't know. This Maybe it was just it, a lot of uh, personal attacks on me mm, in, that so one, in that particular news and notes. personal to you. It like felt bad. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Get it. Get it or else or you, else you will miss fantasy news, Jason. That's what's going to happen. And you'll miss fun fantasy games on yep. the Sleeper app. Yep. Before we move into the waiver wire, Foot Clan, we'll, we'll want, we want to remind you, goodness, want to remind you about jointhefoot.com. You heard yesterday's show, show eight, Hondo in the books. And that's because of the support of kind, kind people, beautiful people like you over at jointhefoot.com. It's our community. It's a way that you can help support this show and also get really cool things like an extra show every single week, our newly unleashed Stream Finder. We have three more research tools in process that will be up on Join the Foot shortly. We're always trying to make this thing better. Tons and tons of you over on jointhefoot.com supporting this show, getting really cool things. Make sure you check it out. 
Yeah, a lot of cool stuff there. And hey, look, if you're hiring, we want to make sure you know about our friends at ZipRecruiter. Hiring can be a really slow, tedious process. I know this. I used to run a uh, you know, a company with about 35 employees, and hiring was easily the worst part. Look, Cafe Altura's COO, Dylan Miskowitz, they needed to hire a director of coffee, and they were having trouble, as is common, and that's why they switched to ZipRecruiter, because ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. It finds the right people for you. It identifies people with the right experience, and it invites them to apply for your job so you get qualified candidates fast. Uh, he also used the ZipRecruiter's candidate rating feature to filter his applicants so he could focus on the most relevant ones for what mattered to him. With results like the fact that you can get someone in just a few days that is perfect for your job, it's no wonder four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter find a qualified candidate in the first day. ZY ZipRecruiter is effective for business of all sizes. Try ZipRecruiter for free. At our web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash footballers. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash footballers. ZipRecruiter.com slash footballers. The smartest way to hire. Put me in, coach. Let's take a look at the waiver wire. Teams returning from the bye week. Panthers, Bucks, Browns, and Steelers. On bye this week, the Ravens and the Cowboys. That's... That's rough, man. That's some serious fantasy firepower that will be on by this week. I would say it's. I would say this is the least. This is the reprieve right now in the middle of bye weeks. Yes, those teams have a lot of fantasy relevant players, but there's only two teams. The next few weeks, next week you got four teams on by, then six teams on by. My goodness. So week ten, you've got to prepare. This is where you start looking ahead. Maybe you can. You know, n next week you got the Falcons, the Bengals, the Rams, the Saints that are going to be gone. If you've got players on those teams, maybe this week you look to trade them for players from the Bills or the Bears or the Colts or the Lions. Play, you know, teams that are already past their buy. Yeah, you pick up that extra week. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. Don't just go buy a bye week and get a crappier player. Make good, even, even win a, trades where you're winning on paper, regardless of bye weeks. But if you this is the time of the year where you flip the script, and not only does it help you, it hurts your opponent. Yep, just to make the leverage play of that. The number one wide receiver pickup of the week, Jason, I have something special. Oh, Because this is a player who has been near and dear to our collective hearts. S specifically, you and I. Yes. Our collective hearts. Now, I know Andy is a big fan of this waiver wire pickup this week anyway. Yeah, we, he's finally on board. But, but we've, he's, we've been here for years. He's crapped on him forever. <laughs> but what happened, if you haven't been following what, what's gone on in the NFL, Pat Mahomes got injured, Matt Moore became the starter for the Kansas City Chiefs. And then across the country, his Wait, best you're, friend... You're correlating these oh, things? Oh, you have to. His best friend, Kenny Stills... You know what I want to call him? Oh, we got a nickname? Kenny Bills... Oh my goodness, you had that prepped. Kenny Bills. Kenny Bills is fantastic. <laughs> He's about to take you to the next I'll level. Oh, give it to Kenny Bills. Money, 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 money. Oh, that's darn right. Look, he is the number one waiver wire pickup at wide receiver this week. There are a handful of good options, but the the reality uh, of, you know, the Matt Moore joke, If you if you haven't listened to us for years, Matt Moore was the backup who became the starter in, uh, in Miami, Miami. Yeah. and he just was – it was Kenny Stills' love fest. It was just – they were in sync. They were in a zone. He was the only guy he threw the ball to. Kenny Stills had great fantasy production, and, and now it's ironic that they're both relevant again in the same week. But the reality is it's Will Fuller who went down for the Houston Texans. Kenny Stills is a quality NFL wide receiver, and he now has a deep-throwing quarterback in – Deshaun Watson with with you know with Fuller out of the way and Oakland on the matchup who gives up the most 20 plus yard passing plays. Oh yeah, 5 plus per week. And they've given up the most despite already having their bye week, Jason. So this this is a defense that you want to target. Kenny Stills is in a very good situation. 4 for 105 on 5 targets in relief 
of Will Fuller, played would, on nearly 94% of the snaps. Would you drop Will Fuller yes. to pick up Kenny Stills? I would as well. I, In fact, Will Fuller, to me, is a must-drop. Because the way sure. that I see his injury history is this is go going to be a slow recovery. He Will Fuller has not been able to stay on the field, has not – you know, been some great miraculous recoverer from injury. He, he did well with the ACL, but aside from that, we have a lot of history. And this is a hamstring, which he struggled with plenty of times. And he's been bad all but one week of the NFL season while yep. he wasn't injured. So this isn't a guy you have to keep holding. I agree. And Kenny Stills is a good replacement. What a wacky world we live in. I know what team you're going to next. We are halfway through the the regular fantasy season and at the beginning I, I remember this being asked week two or week three and the question was do you ever see yourself starting a Miami Dolphin and I left a little room for margin saying we right now it doesn't look like it but fast forward a few weeks Devonte Parker continues to be very fantasy relevant he was five for 55 oh <laughs> Oh, with a touchdown. So if you actually look at what Devontae Parker has done, he was he was goosed out week two. But you know what? Mike Evans has put up a goose week. On top of that, uh, besides that, 75 yards week one, 56, 70 with a touchdown, only 28, but with a touchdown, then 55 with a touchdown. Devontae Parker, if you've been playing him every week, despite the atrocities that the Miami Dolphins are inflicting upon their fan base. Devontae Parker has been perfectly fine for fantasy football. Yeah, you know, he, he really has been. He's the wide receiver 45 on the season, um, but the first half of the year was not as good as what you've been seeing lately. In fact, on a per-game basis since week four, he's the wide receiver 14, and he's been he's done that on the back to back. I mean, if it, if it wasn't for the bye week in there, he, he finished number 11, 24, and 16. That that would be, you know, the, the NBA right. jam rules. But more importantly than that, and, and it's tough to recommend Devontae Parker in general, plus he's got a tough matchup at Pittsburgh. The Steelers' defense has been much, much better after those first couple games. Um, but Ryan Fitzpatrick being the quarterback makes a huge difference because I, bel I know for a fact that Fitzpatrick can support a great fantasy outing. Now, he can implode for sure, but w J Josh Rosen has never done that. Never ever in his career has he supported great fantasy uh, outputs as far as like being able to have a wide receiver one on a week or you know go throw for 403. Fitzmagic can do that, and we would be remiss if we don't also highlight his yes. teammate, Pres uh, Preston, Preston Williams. Williams. He's Six for 82 on eight targets. He is also interesting. With As long as Ryan Fitzpatrick is there, he is interesting. Also getting a huge upgrade because of a new quarterback, it appears. The Tennessee Titans, Corey Davis, who is widely available. Six for 80 with a touchdown seventy on seven targets. A.J. Brown was also six for 64. Finally had a, a good amount of targets, eight targets targets for A.J. Brown with Ryan Tannehill as the new signal caller and Tennessee gets to play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers I know the Bucs are coming off of the bye week but they have been horrific horrific for the past four weeks years <laughs> did you say I'm uh, sorry I was tuning out did you say weeks or did you say years I said weeks but if you want to extrapolate that's probably an okay thing yeah to do. I do yeah it's it's wonderful in fact I would take the Tennessee duo over the Miami duo. If I'm sure. setting my waiver wire priorities, um, also let's let's give Fab percentages for those of you playing in good leagues, which is Fab leagues. No, not that waiver wires can't be a good league. Sure, but just it can be a. It can be better. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kenny Stills is a guy that I you know I'd spend fifteen percent of my Fab, which is a lot for me. I don't usually spend up for wide receivers. Spend what you need to get him because I think he's – if you need a play, I think he's going to be very good. Um, for all these other guys, I'm basically sorting my order on them and then throwing out, you know, whatever, 2 $3 of fab because I don't think anyone is a clear-cut winner. 
Now, between A.J. Brown and Corey Davis, teammates, bo both getting an upgrade because of the quarterback position, who would you rather take the shot on? I will take Corey Davis. You know, I, I think I will, too. When I watched the game... A.J. It, Brown is good, but, I it, mean... Even though they both ended up... You know, A.J. Brown ended up with one more target. It looked like Corey Davis was the first read, was the first guy he was going to through the game. Um, and then and then as, as coverage started to shift, then A.J. Brown came on a little bit stronger. But you have to say A.J. Brown at least has an upside that I don't know Corey Davis has. Uh, A.J. Brown as a rookie looks like a tank out there. Yes, he, he can hit the big play for sure. It's, I'm just looking at snap counts where A.J. Brown is – he's been living in that 60% world. Meanwhile, Corey Davis is you know, in the 80s. So it's just the opportunity of being on the field a little bit more. I think the average person out there might spend more on A.J. Brown than Corey Davis. Hmm. Uh, just because of the unknown, the upside of the, the, the rookie talent, the big plays they've seen this year. So Corey Davis might be the more affordable – and better option, but I, I like both guys. Kiki QT uh, he, from the Houston Texans, he also is a bit more interesting now with Will Fuller out. They get to take on Oakland like we talked about. Let's talk about some Patriots wide receivers. Mohamed Sanu, he's available in almost 50% of leagues, but then Philip Dorsett, Jacoby Myers, these guys are available, but are you actually interested in – any I'm, of these guys. I'm not really interested in any of them. I, I think if you have to pick one, Philip Dorsett has been getting it done. He's been scoring touchdowns. So he would be the guy that I would uh, trust the most. Like I said earlier, I'm not going to be the one pre-grabbing Muhammad Sanu, which someone will probably grab him. And, and he's probably been owned it, more than half of leagues he, he is owned right now. And he's not going to be dropped because he goes to the Patriots. Um but I'm going to wait until after he shows that he's an active part of this offense. They did give up a second for him, but the way that the Patriots see their future always includes their Super Bowl run, which doesn't count for us in fantasy. So I don't think they're trying to rush him out. They're not in a need. They're undefeated. You know, this is this is just a, a depth piece. Um, the Green Bay wide receivers. Nope, let's skip them. Okay. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it. Marquez Valdez Scantling. Was being he had two receptions, and he and it was late. It was much later in the game. He was being completely shut out. He was not on the field very much, but two receptions, 133 yards, and it wasn't and a even a bomb. It was no. just like tackle him, tackle him for a 10 yard reception. No, oh, he gets a 70 yard touchdown and ruins my. My life and my heart. I like how upset you still are at MVS when it was completely a self-inflicted wound by no. you. Yes, that's why I'm upset because I'm not upset at MVS. And then you won. Meanwhile, I'm over here with the worst beat of the week and you're still me, me, me. You're handling it like a man. I'm handling it like a baby. <laughs> I'm, 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 I was not last night. Oh. I was in a bad way, man. I, I, dude, I was about to burn it down. I had, I had so much empathy for you on Slack. I didn't know what to say, but I was with you because the night before, oh. I was when, when, when none of the Eagles were getting it done. I was, you know, I, to steal your phrase, I was in a bad yes, way. I was, mean, lights I, off, <laughs> you, you hoodie on. I, I'm in the closet. I was. Literally just I, my downstairs. I was just walking around the oh, just, just walking fuming. through the kitchen. I, was, I would sit down, put my hands in my face, get up, walk around some more. It was I don't even know what to do with myself right so, now. Okay, so to get back to the Green Bay <laughs> Packers, where I made the mistake of cut MVS, yes. and then he goes off for two for one thirty three and one on only three targets. Are you interested? Aaron Rodgers looks back, baby, or looks at least. I would rather grab these other guys we were talking about over, over even though them. the matchup at Kansas City, the yeah, beatable defense. Now, what's funny is the matchup against Kansas City. It, it seems so great that their defense has been bad. I mean, they they stepped it up last week, but even prior, you take last week out, they've been bad. They've actually been top ten against wide receivers, which just seems so surprising. It's not the narrative that you would expect. It's not how it feels, but it's statistically, they've been top 10 against wide receivers. So Geronimo, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, you know, it's, it's, uh, 
I, I don't really want to trust either of these guys. Factored into that for me as well is, is this, is this the week that Adams comes back? He's been out since week four. Is that enough time for him to recover enough to play from the turf toe? I say yes. <laughs> Get back out there, Adams. <laughs> I need you. He's literally like my most my most owned player through all my core leagues. It's been killing me. Um, you know, based on what we've seen so far, practice wise, reports wise, comments from him, I still don't expect him back this week. But Fair. timeline wise, it should be in the realm of possibility that he plays. Let's look a little bit deeper here, guys. That if you're in a very active league, they may still be available. But Darius Slayton from the Giants. He's he's on the field the whole game. Only had two targets taken on Detroit, but tied for the fifth most wide receiver routes run in Week Seven. He is somewhat interesting. Zach Pascal, the breakout star from last week for the Colts, who went six for 106 and two on seven targets. Eh. Yeah. I'm, I'm not totally digging either of those guys. I would take Slayton over Pascal, despite the fact that Pascal had the breakout and right. Slayton did very little. But the name that... Yeah, I was saying, how about these guys then? From the Cincinnati Bengals, Auden Tate just keeps getting it done. Auden, Auden Tate feels like you have waiver wire fatigue from talking about him. I don't understand how we can bring him up every week and then every week he's still... 38% owned. Nobody wants him. Nobody wants to play him. I mean, the guy's been pretty good. He didn't play much in week one. He was, you know, and it wasn't, he got the start in week two. From that point on, he's on pace for a thousand yards. I mean, he's been consistent. His one poor game, he actually caught a touchdown. So it wasn't that bad. Now, this is Andy Dalton and the Bengals. And so you're not I mean, maybe that's it. You want more of an upside, right? Obviously, we would rather have Kenny Stills and some of these other names. But Auden Tate, I think, has a much higher floor than a lot of these guys. I mean, if we're talking Darius Slayton or even even if you talk about MBS and Geronimo Allison, we've seen those guys just completely not show up, whereas Auden Tate every week has been steady. 50, 60, 70 yards or a touchdown. Yeah, he's Auden Tate's very interesting. Alex Erickson, any interest in him? His the the teammate of Auden Tate, eight for a hundred and thirty seven on fourteen targets. You buying into that at all? I'm not buying into it. I mean, he's played the entire season, and prior to that, his weekly high was six targets. Uh, you know, people have outlier games. This was one for him. And Alex Erickson is usually the type of player. Obviously, it wasn't so much last game, but he's usually the type of player that's getting like a five yard reception. You know, he's like the, the Ryan Switzer. Right. Let's talk about oh. running backs. Oh, if Ryan Ryan Switzer, you know, he's really neutral. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, I know. Yeah, he's Ryan Switzerland. Uh -huh. I, I <laughs> Yeah. Are you pre-calling your shot? No, I just did it. I'm just saying Ryan Switzer. We're never going to be able to no. really get behind Ryan Switzer because he's irrelevant. But he's still Ryan Switzerland to me now. <laughs> you heard it here first. Yes. Folks coined on the fantasy footballers on this Tuesday show. Congratulations. It, I mean, it's no Kitty Bills. Oh, you want to talk about this oh, guy? Oh, Kitty Bills. Oh, hold on. Money, 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 money. All right. <laughs> Let's go to the most important yes. position in fantasy football. And honestly, I would have started with this position, but I wanted to talk about Kenny Bills. Yeah, it's fair. Well, money, 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 money. Latavius money. Oh, is he, that one is not sticking. <laughs> Latavius Murray, he's he's, pro look, he's he's what he's owned in yeah. your league, but sometimes you just got to do a little peek because they're taking on Arizona. We're not sure about Alvin Kamara's status. The main waiver wire running back pickup of the week. Somehow, it's still Chase Edmonds. He's forty eight percent owned. He went full hamburglar. It's not this past week. It's not a pickup for our audience. Look. Well, maybe you might new. be. Maybe you you know you you've been playing well. You're in the playoff hunt. You said I want to find a podcast to help push me over the top. Welcome in. Welcome. We're happy to have you. Um, we're gonna get you that hashtag Foot Clan title. But we've been saying pick up Chase Edmonds for weeks. He is a must. It doesn't matter if you have David Johnson. He's a guy that. Are you burning your number one waiver priority for Chase Edmonds? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um. Look. Uh. What is today? Tuesday. Today the, the Cardinals are bringing in Jay Ajayi. Uh, and, um, 
Spencer Ware. And I heard Benny Cunningham was also added to that list. Sure. Just so br bring them all in. To, for, you don't work out these running backs unless you're worried about the depth. And you're not worried about the depth if you've got two healthy starters in David Johnson and Chase Edmonds. And you don't. So, yeah, Chase Edmonds is a, is a must-own guy. The He's matchups suck <laughs> for Chase Edmonds coming up. Takes on the Saints, then the San Francisco 49ers. But the Arizona offense will produce enough that Chase Edmonds will be a great play. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I, you know, this isn't chasing last week's three touchdown, you know, right. game. We're not chasing the points here because we've seen this coming for a while. And, yeah, I mean, it's it, his upside is certainly not going to be another 126-3 against the Saints, but he's a guy that has to be rostered, and somehow he's still available in 52% of leagues. And you don't need – Another trolling from the Arizona Cardinals Twitter account where they said you should have started Chase Edmonds in fantasy. People you know, wanted us to talk about it, so uh, people, I'm bringing it up. So, okay, I didn't want to I, – I saw someone, like, calling us out on Twitter for not bringing it up, and I thought about re re responding to that, and I was just like, I just don't care. Like, I'm, I'm, I don't I, – like, I've seen the, the world is on fire about this. I'm like, yes. why? Yeah, I don't. I, I think I just, it was a well done troll. Yeah, they, they like, didn't know. No, of course not. It wasn't like aha, I got you. Yeah. they were. They were. They were probably doing the same thing. The guy who runs that, he probably has Chase Edmonds on his bench. Yes, and said, "Oh, hope you started Chase Edmonds." So I, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't think it was. Yeah, I, I wasn't upset by it. In Detroit, Ty Johnson seems like the player most likely to take over for carry on Johnson. 10 for 29, but 4 for 28 through the air. Tied for the second most running back routes run in week 7. He gets to play the Giants. This is probably the main pickup this week. And then Oakland. The, the, I mean, I genuinely think that Ty Johnson is the main waiver wire pickup Number one, would you burn it for well, Ty Johnson? Yes, 100%. If, if you need a running back, they don't. You know, th this is what you're looking for is a guy who's capable coming in replacement of an injured starter with a good matchup. And he's got two good matchups. And from what I understand is that Carrion Johnson's expected to miss multiple yes, weeks. Yes, that's what we Right heard. now they're calling it week to week, but multiple weeks is probably what he misses. So if you're telling me that I get to get a starting running back against the Giants and you know, the Raiders, I'm all about that life. Now, he's not going to come in and be a workhorse. That, that's just not. Pat Matricia, Pat Matricia, <laughs> that's good. Matt Patricia's <laughs> okay. Oh, good, it works. Um, that's that's not his mo, and I do think you're gonna see a, you're gonna see some. You know, if you're in a PPR league, a super deep league, and you want to go with some smooches. Oh, with, with JD McKissick. McKissick. Uh, he he got run. Uh, he's the passing downs guy there as well. Um, but Ty Johnson. Once carry on went out, he was the clear snap leader, the clear carry leader. He was involved in the passing game as well. They both, both Ty Johnson and McKissick, ended up with about the same total yardage. McKissick was a little bit more efficient. But, yeah, I mean, I, I would pick Ty Johnson up. If you're not familiar with him, he's, uh, you He know. was a fifth-round pick. He was not at the combine. He did, however, at his pro day. Now, if you follow the combine and metrics, you know that the pro day can be a little fuzzy. Mm -hmm. Ran an unofficial 4.26. Ran a very unofficial. Yes. 4.26 4 is – get out of here. No, he didn't He didn't really run that, I don't believe. But but he's fast. Yeah, he's fast. He has a huge opportunity here. You don't have like a 4.7 guy accidentally get a 4.26 <laughs> like, oh, looks like you got a 3.9. It's a pro day. The running backs from Washington, I, we just have, at least have to mention them. Wendell Smallwood, Chris Thompson, maybe he's out there. Uh, but they take on Minnesota and then Buffalo. Both games are on the road. Not very interesting. But if you need desperate, a, desperate times call for desperate measures. Yeah, if you have to have a, a starter, he's Speaking a starter. Speaking of desperate, maybe you'd rather pick up Mark Walton. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey, Mark Waltonberg. Hey, it's oh, been a while, man. Hey, man, it's me. I'm back. I've just been waiting for my time. Hey, say what, hi to your mother for me. What are you, what have you been doing down in Miami, Mark? Oh, I've just been, you know, running from the police and, <laughs> you know, just trying to stay clean, man. Just being me. Waiting for Kenya Drake to get traded. He did find himself in a little bit of trouble with the law. Uh, say hi to your parole officer for me. <laughs> oh, wow. 
Wow. It's me, Mark Wattenberg. Oh, goodness. Okay. It's at Jason FFL on Twitter and Instagram where you can send all your complaints. Mm, sorry. But Mark Walton, 14 for 66 against the Buffalo Bills. It was actually a very impressive performance. He gets Pittsburgh and the Jets. I think he should be picked up. I don't know if I'm ready to play him. I would rather pick up and play the other guys we've been talking about. Yeah, here, the but he should be on your bench. Yeah, I mean, uh, sure. Anytime, I mean, we're bringing up Wendell Smallwood, who we've always said is just a guy. He's a below average NFL running back. He's got a terrible matchup. If you're picking him up, you're picking Mark Walton up. Um, the problem I have with Mark Walton is that all of a sudden the goal line back has clearly become Kalen Balazs. So now you've got like... Is that multiple weeks now or was that just that's this multi week? Multiple weeks. So, uh, you know, it's weird because Kalen Balazs is pretty much not used except there. Um, but if, you know, if Mark Walton is more involved, I, I still think the Dolphins are doing everything in their power to trade Kenya Drake. If he goes away, Mark Walton will get even more work. Yep. Jamal Williams. Mostly owned. The other Green Bay running back. Ronald Jones and the, the Tampa Bay running game. <sighs> Man, I – No. He's you touching your nose to yeah, say no. I'm I'm out. You've got to pick him up before the, me. I just there are certain situations. There's the only upside for Ronald Jones is if Peyton Barber misses time. Yes. The and and the, and that's not to say that he won't have good games while Peyton Barber's out there. He already has. But good luck guessing it. There are certain situations of fantasy you just need to avoid because yes, you're going to avoid being wrong at times, but you're going to avoid being right on, you know, it, it's just one of those like goodness gracious you have no idea what they're going to do. Don't plug a guy into your lineup that could just go out there and get two carries for nothing. Benny Snell should be on handcuff watch running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers simply because James Conner has been in and out of games. They were on their bye. He was injured during that, and we, ha we haven't seen a practice update once they've, they're back yet. So if he's still struggling, then Benny Snell becomes a starter. I mean, he had 17 carries uh, before the bye. Yeah, and they take on Miami. Handcuff watch, Alexander Madison, he should be on your bench. Look, we've been saying a couple names where it's like you've got to pick them up. Chase, Chase Edmonds was one. Yes. Alexander Madison is probably the next biggest. Him and Tony Pollard. Yes. If you don't have Cook, if you don't have Zeke, but you've got a roster spot where there's just got some crappy wide receiver five in it, then go get Alexander Madison or Tony Pollard. They're still available. Daryl Henderson – Seems like he's moving his way up to that talk with how limited they've run Todd Gurley out there. And then the last kind of handcuff I think you need to pay attention to, Reichwell Armstead mm, for the sure. Jacksonville Jaguars. Just, just with the usage that Leonard Fournette has been seeing and his it, uh, propensity to be hurt. It's a great name for three reasons. You just gave two of them, right? The usage of Fournette is massive. That's what this team wants to do is run the ball. The injury history of Fournette combined with that is poor. But then the third reason is there ain't no one else. Right. He, like, he would become Leonard Fournette. Part of the reason Leonard Fournette is getting all of this work is because the only the, there's just no other options, but then there will be no other options behind Rykel Armstead if he's there. And then keep in mind Kareem Hunt, he's, he's still oh, three yeah, weeks yeah. out. Yes, people are asking, what do you do with Kareem Hunt? If you are the type of fantasy player that is in on Kareem Hunt and his upside and the possibilities, you better stash him now. You uh, We're going into week eight. He will be uh, able to play in week 10. We'll see what the, the Cleveland Browns plans actually are. Before you do it, look at your roster because I just mentioned that you know in a couple weeks, I think it's week the week nine buys – well, week nine is four teams up by week ten is is more. So maybe that – look at your bye weeks. Because if you've got a lot coming up in week ten and then Kareem Hunt's back, maybe you'll need him. But don't – if you've got buys coming up in week nine where it's like, oh, man, I've got two guys out, two important players, don't fill your bench with a third guy that cannot help your team. At the tight end position – Hey, real quick before we move oh, on to tight end. Oh, Al, 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 What's up? <laughs> hey, what's up? Hey, for some clarification, you had said that Ty Johnson is your number one running back pickup on the week. Is that assuming Chase Edmonds yes. is gone? That, is, that okay. is because I assume that all of our listeners in their leagues, Chase Edmonds is, is not available. Chase, Edmund, Chase Edmonds would be ab above Ty Johnson, but Chase, Ty Johnson – Chase Edmonds is – if he is there, 
is the number one pickup of the week. He's above Ty Johnson. He's above money, Kenny money, Bill. Money, money, money. Now, now, the reality is, if David Johnson comes back, Chase Edmonds becomes – if you have to have a play. So let's say you're in the situation, you've got uh, you know, uh, some guys on by, some guys injured, and you have to have a running back that you could pick up and play. In that situation, would you put Ty Johnson ahead of Chase Edmonds? No. Because you could still play Chase Edmonds yes. even if David Johnson is back in a poor matchup. I agree with you. Yep, I would roll with that. At the tight end position, guys that are probably owned – uh, Gerald Everett had another big game, four for 50, and a touchdown on 10 targets. His usage is maddening <laughs> at times where you had two weeks ago where we finally bought in, and then he does nothing, and then he follows that up. When you're out with a good performance, he's just he's one of those fringe tight end one guys who has upside every single week. Sure. Jimmy Graham I would throw out in that situation as well. Four for 65 and one last week. Plays Kansas City. We talked about Kansas City surprisingly was top 10 against wide receivers. Part of the reason for that is because they're not that great against tight ends. Uh, the matchup is great. I don't, you know, I see this next name like probably own but worth checking on. Is TJ Hawkinson really worth checking on? Because I don't think so. Uh, No. It, well, we he's, got he's we got hoodwinked. We got hoodwinked by that week one. The six for one thirty one and one against the Cardinals week one, because of his draft capital, his actual talent, what he did in college, the love we had for him, and then the week one breakout with the snap counts, the targets, the routes run. Oh, Everton was great. But then from weeks two through seven, he's twelve for eighty eight and one. He has a worse game with a lot of drop touchdowns. Yes. That that's the only reason why it for me it's yeah we'll I'll look at him because he has had many dropped touchdowns and depending how would, you want to look at the glass half empty half full to me uh, those are end zone targets would you rather start T J Hawkinson or Eric Ebron on a weekly basis you got to start one they're both on your roster don't have both on your roster but if they were I guess Ebron yeah I mean I would I, that's easy for me it's Ebron it's the guy who's gotten it done far more often in his career. What a catch this last week. That was a that was a baller catch. Chris Herndon. Speaking of waiver wire fatigue, talking about Chris Herndon, he is still widely available. He has yet to play with his suspension and then the hamstring injury. Jacksonville, eh, not not the, necessarily the grace matchup, but the Jets have a huge string of games coming up, and I believe that Chris Herndon would slide right back into the starting role that Ryan Griffin currently has, and Ryan Griffin's out there a ton. Chris Herndon's a must, much better pass catcher. I, I, yeah, I mean, there's if I've got room on my roster to hold a second tight end, that, that guy's always going to be Chris Herndon at this point right now. Let me ask you this, though, Jason. Okay. Chris Herndon, or pick up my tight end start of the week last week, Mr. Dallas Goddard. That's an easy Got air. Got air. Um, Philadelphia Eagles. Sure. No, uh, look, that's that's an easy decision for me. This is a do I need a, a guy to start or do I need a guy to hold behind someone that is meh? Um, if it's someone to hold, then it's Chris Herndon. If I need the start, I'm worried Chris Herndon doesn't play. And I think Dallas Goddard is better than most all of these options. So, so like Dallas Goddard or Eric Ebron. Now, Eric Ebron probably has a better chance of performing on a week-in, week-out basis than Dallas Goddard, but not by much. Yes, it, it's but probably, it's, it's, but it's, I don't it's know. It's slim. It's slim. But Eric Ebron doesn't have this alternate reality available to him where if T.Y. Hilton when goes Jack down Doyle goes or down. if Jack Doyle goes down, then all of a sudden he becomes a superstar. So I would rather have I would rather have on my roster Goddard, who I could throw out there. He's always got the touchdown upside. He's dropped a couple, like uh, like Hawkinson yes. has, but he's also had several good games. He's out there, you know, sixty plus percent of snaps. He's running routes, and if something happened to Zach Ertz, all of a sudden you've got a top five guaranteed tight end. So most of these guys, I'm taking Dallas Goddard over. I agree with most that. Most of these, I'm taking Dallas Goddard over most of these guys. I think that's the better way to say it. Awesome. Ben Watson is somewhat interesting to me. He had five targets in his first performance with the New England Patriots, gets Cleveland this next week. So uh, I, he's at least worth looking at if things are desperate. Jason, are you ready to talk about streaming quarterbacks? I'm in my canoe. Let's hop in a stream. 
full stream ahead. Streaming quarterbacks for the week, guys that may be available on your waiver wire that you can pick up and play this week. I'll kick it off. Matthew Stafford, who has been balling out, but we still have the pain of last year and Matthew Stafford's disappointment. I honestly think that still looms heavy in the in your baseline built-in opinion of what Matthew Stafford is able to do, but he has been crushing. He's get, he's got his mojo back. He has his highest touchdown rate since 2011, highest average yards per attempt of his career. He ranks third in average depth of target over 10 yards per pass, and he plays the New York Giants. Yes, I get it. Kyler Murray was a disappointment against the New York Giants. That's because Chase Edmonds ran for 150 yards and three touchdowns. There was production there to have. It just swung real heavy to the running back. I don't think that will happen against the the Lions. Matty Stafford versus the Giants. Uh, it's a great play. No, I love it. And your point of saying how heavy last year weighs on us is so true. Last year he was the quarterback 20. He sucked in fantasy. You just assume he's done. He's Andy Dalton. He's whatever. He's fallen off. The last three years prior, you forget, he was he, he, was, he was top solid. 10. Yeah. He was the ninth quarterback, the seventh quarterback, and the seventh quarterback. Uh, you know, th those are those are great finishes. He's an awesome start without on Johnson. With the wide receiving core, Marvin Jones, Kenny Gall, I love your pick here. Um, I also like my pick, which uh, unfortunately lost his wide receiver one, but I'm still not worried. I'm talking about Kirk Cousins. Ooh. Kirk Cousins' revenge game. It is. Against the Washington Redskins. Look, the Washington Redskins are a very, very, It's too very... bad Gruden is gone. Oh, I know. Because that would have been even more revenge. Well, but Gruden liked him. No. You don't think Gruden no. liked Kirk Cousins? No. I, th I don't think so. I think... I, I thought don't... Gruden... I thought back in the day Gruden was the one pushing to get Cousins over Griffin. He was. But then when it came to an extension, Gruden was not in. Uh, I blame the GM. Anyways... Still a revenge game. Yes. He's at home, and the Washington Redskins, their defense stinks. If you look at it on the season, you're like, well, they're, they're getting better. No, they're not. Two weeks ago, they played Miami. Sure, they didn't give up a lot of fantasy <laughs> points to Miami and Josh Rosen for half the game. Um, yeah, okay. And then last week against the San Francisco 49ers, Niners, they only gave up nine points. But that was, that was a game that... I mean, that doesn't count. That Like, that game has to be deleted. That game was absurd, and, and we talked about it yesterday. If you haven't seen the pictures or oh, the videos man. of that game, you've got to go look it up. It's, it's unbelievable. It's great. There was no grass. It was just mud. They were playing in a, in a mud field, slipping and sliding everywhere. It's unbelievable. Outside of those games, Washington was allowing 30.2 fantasy points per game to the quarterback position. And guess what? Kirk Cousin, over the last three weeks... Was he just singularized? <laughs> he was. Kirk Cousin? I was going to leave it alone. All right. Well, Kirk Cousin, uh, over the last three weeks. Kirk's Cousin. There it is. Kirk's Cousin meet Kirk Cousins. Say that five times Ooh. fast. Say it three times fast. No. Try. Kirk's Cousins meet Kirk Cousins. Kirk's Cousins meet Kirk Cousins. Kirk's Cousins meet Kirk Cousins. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm very impressed. You got to check the computer on that one because I, I think that oh, was. Did I get yeah. it? Let's it was, see. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, no, look, <laughs> Kirk Cousins got off to such a poor start that it's hard to trust. They want to run the ball, yada, yada, yada. Uh, Kirk Cousins over the last three weeks has not been good. He's been great. He's yes. been uh, – the deep ball accuracy, everything's been on point. What? Where do you think over the last three weeks? Because we've had some monster weeks, Aaron Rodgers, Lamar Jackson. Oh, he's uh, – over the last, the last three, three weeks? Uh, I mean, at least top five. I'll go, I'll go number three. You're still low. He's the number two wow. quarterback over that time. Only Deshaun Watson is higher than Kirk Cousins. So, yeah, I mean, it stinks that he doesn't have Adam Thielen. And, yes, they can run the ball. This could be one of those game scripts where they're up. So, he's not like a smash play. I'd rather play Matthew Stafford. But there are a lot of things here that say it's a good matchup. He's playing good ball. Just, you know, don't overthink it. A couple other interesting guys for this week. I think Jacoby Brissett is very in play versus Denver. Teddy Bridgewater versus Arizona. Tannehill against Tampa Bay. Mason yeah. Rudolph against Miami. There's a lot 
Certainly. Lots to choose from this week. It is not slim pickings. Let's get into the defense. Defense versus offense. Presented by Head and & Shoulders and Walmart. I don't know if I can match the output of the, the Kansas oh, the City Ca- Chiefs. Yes. Oh, goodness. The, the, the Kansas City defense play last week. That was pretty sweet, but we're going to try. We had mentioned this team as a pickup and stash through the bye week if you had space because they get to take on Miami. Pittsburgh, they're available in about half of leagues, averaging almost four sacks a week, 15 takeaways, tied for second in the NFL, scoring double-digit fantasy points four weeks in a row. They're a they're a very, very good defensive unit. Now they get to take on Miami. It's They're in a very excellent position. Yeah, I, I agree, and even though I uh, you probably want me to disagree, no. Because I disagreed with your Kansas uh, City defense that, last was week. Was that the magic? And that either there's one of two options here. Either the magic was me, which you know usually is a good call. Sure. But the other magic could be the opponent being. Say, now you're now you're just biting. The Denver Broncos <laughs> were who you picked the Kansas City Chiefs to play against last week, this and it was delightful. Call. I am staying in that, and I'm going with the Colts against those Denver Broncos who gave up nine sacks last week. To a putrid Kansas City defense. And and look, the Colts are a good team with a good defense. They went to their bye week. They got a little bit healthier. And they came out off their bye. And they played the Houston Texans, whose offense has been outstanding. They they had two interceptions, three sacks, a safety. They put up a monster week last week. Frank Reich's got them coaching well. Uh, you know, <laughs> yes. I mean, I, ju- I just, you know, the combination of Joe Flacco on one side with the struggles of that offensive line last week with the Colts, Frank Reich and the health of the Colts' defense. Uh, and they can pass rush with four guys. Right. They can put pressure on. I, I like it. I think the Colts are in a very good spot. I'm expecting multiple sacks. And then the last one, I'll just throw this out here because it's, it's very interesting to me as well. If you're streaming Matt Stafford, let's go with the stack, man. Detroit Lions versus the Giants. Daniel Jones has been real stinky. Since his real the breakout game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, it's almost like matchups matter for quarterbacks. A little bit. But Daniel Jones has been rough, throwing more interceptions than touchdowns. And, and I will throw out um, uh, as another one that you're looking for, the Seahawks. Sure. Because they're going to play a, yep. an Atlanta Falcons team with Matt Schaub. Oof, that's rough. I mean, that's great for the defense. <laughs> yes, it is. Head and shoulders offense for great hair defense against flakes. Check it out on walmart.com or at your local Walmart. You know one wants you don't want to be flaky. Oh, no 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 no. No no no. no, no. Like I'm wearing this this beautiful black shirt. Imagine dandruff all over this. Get that out of here. I can't even imagine it. I've oh. never seen it. If head there was, shoulders. I would grab some head and shoulders. Yeah. Of course, want to thank today's studio sponsor. Oh, a timely a timely victory for someone here. Whew. Pristine Auction, the best sports memorabilia site of all time. Go sign up. Use that promo code BALLERS. Get five bucks for your first purchase. A signed Corey Davis jersey. What? Went for $29. What? The, the t-shirt I'm wearing right now was more <laughs> expensive than that. Si- that is more expensive than this <laughs> signed NFL jersey. That's unbelievable. It's it's an auction system, Jason, and sometimes you catch people sleeping. Get dude, go get your holiday gifts right now. Get them all set up. You'll impress everybody and you won't spend as much as you think. That'll do it for today's show. Thank you for joining the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to follow our accounts, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.